did we finish up everything that we wanted to talk about with the four rivers though? I think you, you know, it, depending on how, was there something else you wanted to say? Um, before. Well, I was telling you that, well, let's see. Yeah. I was talking about how they were rivers of life that flowed to the whole known world, essentially. Mm -hmm. So it flowed to mankind and blessings came to mankind. And I mentioned that really in the, in the tabernacle worship, it, it reflects the garden and it prophesies of Israel conducting her duties during the millennium. So in the temple service, you kind of have a, a little of both of that going on. But so when the high priest enters into the most holy place, let's see, I mentioned that Aaron's rod budding mm -hmm. is an indication that he may have restored mortal life, right? Yeah. Oh, and then I was going to mention, okay, I mentioned how there was only one tree in the garden. Yeah. And we'll have to get into that. But when when it says the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the midst of the garden, that's how it would be perceived from Adam's perspective. And it says, and the tree of life. But that's just a name for the same tree. It's another name for the same tree. And anyone that has knowledge of good and evil knows that this tree provides life. And so, hmm. um, so they, it's just two different perspectives on the same tree, but, um, oh, the reason I know that is because there's only one ark in the Holy of Holies. That's what the ark represents. It's the tree. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Do you understand why the Ten Commandments are kept inside the ark and it's shut? Because Adam's not supposed to get in there. See. Oh, he's not. He's not supposed to know the knowledge of good and evil. Yeah, that's kind of illustrated there. So that's when really the high, yeah, when the high priest enters the most holy place, there's the ark and. The knowledge of good and evil is inside it, but it's closed, you know. But then on the floor in front of him is a pot of manna and Aaron's rod that budded. These are the things that the immortal priest was able to bestow on the world, you know. Uh, but he wasn't to get into the box, you know. So Yeah. So that's kind of illustrated there. But that's how I know there was just one tree in the garden. But that's that's why Eve, when she's talking to the serpent, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. You can tell it's like yeah, there's there's just one tree, hmm. you know. Yeah. I and the, the other thing is that, like, the tree of life never comes into the picture until after Adam and Eve, and, Adam and Eve, have the knowledge of good and evil, and then they're restricted from it. Mm -hmm. See, so they couldn't continue eating from it to give themselves life, you know. So that's what's going on. <laughs> That's interesting. So I, I guess someone could read that as like, well, okay, they ate from the one tree, knowledge of good and evil, but then there's the tree of life that they could have eaten from. I guess maybe someone could see that as two different trees, I, I guess, but really it was talking about the same tree that if they yeah. kept eating of the knowledge, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, they actually would have been immortal or extended their life or something. Yeah, it would have extended life, yeah. Yeah, they, they're restricted from the tree because they could have eaten from it to live, to continue living. Mm -hmm. And um, the reason they didn't, when they ate, the reason they didn't immediately think, oh, well, let's eat again and live forever now. 
The reason is because with the knowledge of good and evil, they were distracted. Hmm. Because, because as soon as they ate, they turned 13. And what they did 